Hey, what's up you guys? Today I want to discuss the Warren Buffett 2020 letter to the Berkshire shareholders. The letter is as usual packed with information, but I found five themes particularly interesting and I wanted to share those with you. The first theme I would highlight is Buffett's message to never bet against America. As a firm believer in the American dream, Buffett says, in its brief 232 years of existence, there has been no incubator of unleashing human potential like America. Despite some severe interruptions, our country's economic progress has been breathtaking. We have moved forward and will continue to do so. And he says, our unwavering conclusion is to never bet against America. Buffett shared interesting facts in the letter to illustrate Berkshire's American credentials. He said, the conglomerate owns the biggest amount of U.S. assets by value, property, plant, equipment, than any other company in the country. And this, by the way, is not the first time we hear Buffett speak in this manner about America. Nothing can stop America when you get right down to it. And uh, it's been true all along. It may have been interrupted uh, one of the scariest of scenarios when you had a war with one group of states fighting another group of states and it may have been tested again in the Great Depression and it may be tested now to some degree but in the end the answer is never bet against America. The second theme I found interesting is Buffett's mistake of 37.2 billion dollars. Buffett admitted he made a mistake when he bought Precision Cast Parts Corporation five years ago for 37.2 billion. In the letter he writes, I paid too much for the company, no one misled me in any way, I was simply too optimistic about PCC's normalized profit potential. Last year my miscalculation was laid bare by adverse developments throughout the aerospace industry. PCC's most important sources of customers. I was wrong, however, in judging the average amount of future earnings and consequently wrong in my calculation of the proper price to pay for the business. PCC is far from my first error of that sort, but it is a big one. The pandemic was the main reason for that mistake. Less flying meant less demand for replacement parts and new aircraft. PCC slashed its workforce by about 40% last year, according to Berkshire's annual report. The third theme I think it's really interesting is the focus on buyback as opposed to new deals. Berkshire repurchased nearly $25 billion of its own stock as Buffett struggled to find any value in 2020 and better ways to invest the cash. The conglomerate has continued to buy its own stock since the end of last year and is likely to keep doing so. That action, he says, increased your ownership, if you own Berkshire, in all of Berkshire's businesses by 5.2% without requiring you to so much as touch your wallet. In no way do we think that Berkshire shares should be repurchased at simply any price. I emphasize that point because American CEOs have an embarrassing record of devoting more company funds to repurchases when prices have risen than when they have tanked. Our approach is exactly the reverse. All right, the fourth theme that grabbed my attention is Buffett becoming more open-minded when it comes to controlling businesses. He writes, Charlie and I want our conglomerate to own all or part of a diverse group of businesses with good economic characteristics and good managers. Whether Berkshire controls these businesses, however, is unimportant to us. And here's the thing. This statement was not true not too long ago. Buffett says, It took me a while to wise up, but Charlie and also my 20 year struggle with the textile operation I inherited at Berkshire finally convinced me that owning a non controlling portion of a wonderful business is more profitable, more enjoyable, and far less work than struggling with 100% of a marginal enterprise. For those reasons, our conglomerate will remain a collection 
of controlled and non-controlled businesses. And the last thing that stood out to me is an obvious one. On the topic of investing, Buffett said, ultra low interest rates around the world diminished the appeal of the bond market. According to the Oracle of Omaha, bonds are not the place to be these days. He writes, can you believe that the income recently available from a 10-year US Treasury bond had fallen 94% from the 15.8% yield available in September in 1981? In certain large and important countries such as Germany and Japan, investors earn a negative return on trillions of dollars. Fixed income investors worldwide, where the pension funds, insurance companies, or retirees face a bleak future. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something new today on investing. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to destroy the like button. And as usual, if I missed anything, drop it down in the comment section below. And if you're new here, please subscribe for more videos and real investing advice. Check out some of my other videos from my investing playlist where I talk about the most important topics and teach you what to do. So, until next time, stay the course and keep investing on a regular basis.